I found myself staring at the dreaded blank canvas again. It seemed like inspiration was standing me up, so I decided to go on a little quest to find it myself. Luckily, my local renaissance fair was only a week away, so I figured, why not see what kind of painting inspiration we can find there? But that means I'm gonna need a costume. So I scrolled through some inspiration and wow, y'all really do like to go all out on these. Officially inspired, I decided it was time to get to designing my own costume. The fun thing about the Renaissance Festival is that you don't have to dress like you're from the Renaissance. You've got your classic Ren Faire lineup of Vikings, Elves, Knights, Pirates, Witches, and Fairies. But then you've also got folks sauntering around as Jack Sparrow, Shrek, a Hobbit, or even a Mushroom. But I'm rolling on a budget and sticking to what I either have in my closet or can find at the thrift store. Maybe next year I'll be more brave with my costume, but for now, we're sticking with the true Ren Faire classic. The fair maiden. That means I'll need a white dress, a colorful skirt, a corset, and some nice boots and accessories. So let's go find all that. A short road trip later and I found myself at one of the most unique thrift stores in the country. Everything in this place is unclaimed baggage, meaning when someone's luggage is lost and never claimed, it ends up in this place. There's been enough weird finds here that they even have a mini museum full of things like a hoggle from the labyrinth. Anyways, lucky for me, I was able to find all the pieces I needed. Kind of. While I wasn't able to find an actual corset, I was able to find this top that, with a few adjustments, might just work. Naturally, I waited to start sewing the night before the fair, so it's time to kick things into gear. First things first, I dusted off my trusty sewing machine that has done a fabulous job as a paperweight for the past year. Then, with fingers crossed, I made the first cut. The idea is to cut out the middle seam, hem the edges, and then add some eyelets so that I can lace it up. Unfortunately though, everything sounds a thousand times easier than it actually is, so my first and second attempt included causing a jam with a nice knot of thread. As you can see, this fabric is not forgiving at all. It left these giant holes, so I had to be careful to sew back over that area so that you wouldn't be able to see it in the end. Now once the hemming was done, it was time to add the eyelets. I've never worked with these or this fabric before, so all I could imagine was the possible wardrobe malfunction happening tomorrow where all the eyelets ripped through the fabric from the tight lace. But once I got one of these on, it seemed pretty sturdy. And yes, I somehow don't own a hammer right now, so we're using a wrench. I used some imitation leather cord to lace it up and gave it a quick try on. The top was still too big for me though, so I decided to sew up the back a couple inches and then cut away the excess fabric. Satisfied, I set an alarm and hit the hay. And here is the reveal. But uh, pay no mind to the shoe situation. Uh, someone forgot to find some boots. Now, a cool feature about my local Ren Faire is that there is actually a castle you can check out. So of course, that's the first thing I headed towards. I decided to pull out my watercolors and take some time to paint the castle. I mean, it's not every day you get to see a castle in Tennessee. Now, you're probably raising an eyebrow like, wait, how does a castle end up in Tennessee? Well, this is Castle Gwyn, and a man named Mike Freeman sketched a castle as his dream house back in high school. Then, in 1980, he started building it. He has been working on it and living in it over the years. And in 1986, he started the Tennessee Renaissance Festival, where he decided to allow the festival goers to visit the castle. It's a neat little novelty we have here in Middle Tennessee, and since I grew up seeing it from the nearby interstate, it was pretty cool getting to see it close up and in person for the first time. Oh, and if you're a Swifty, you might also recognize this castle. Now for this painting, I tried a different process of painting a base layer, drawing the line work second, and then finishing off the details with more paint. I'm definitely going to have to give this process another try later on, because if I base it on this painting, I'd probably never do it again. 
So once I got home, I took my colored pencils to it, hoping to get it to a point that I would like better. And while it is better, I'm still not completely happy with it. I really want to have a Renaissance Fair inspired painting that I can be proud of. So just stay tuned in this video because I'm going to give it a second try. For the rest of the day, I roamed a few of the artisan stalls, ate some more food, and then sat down to enjoy the joust. With only a few hours left, I couldn't help but contemplate the idea of the Renaissance Festival. What I find truly fascinating is the way everyone just embraces the fantasy. Performers are all in character, and even the visitors in jeans and t-shirts seem to get lost in the magic. There's this aura of shared wonder that's contagious, like we're all part of the secret club that appreciates the blend of reality and fantasy. Leaving the festival, I felt this mix of contentment and curiosity. There's something about the Renaissance Fair that makes you want to hold on to its magic just a little bit longer. I can't help but wonder how to capture this energy in a painting. So, it has now been three months since I attended the Renaissance Festival, but the thing is, I accomplished my goal. I came up with an art idea. In fact, I came up with a ton of art ideas. The problem is, none of them feel like the perfect idea. In other words, I beat art block only to be defeated by perfectionism. So I've now hit that point where I need to just roll up my sleeves and beat this perfectionism by just getting something made. One reason I got so hung up on this is because I kept having ideas I love made from art mediums I've never even worked with before. So step one was just to commit to an art medium. Step two was to make a list of all the different things associated with the Renaissance Festival and pick some of my favorites. Step three was to come up with a concept and style. I decided to paint a town, but the twist is I want all the Renaissance elements to be subtle. So from afar, it looks like a typical classic painting of an old town, but when you look close, you realize there's a few extra oddities. What I didn't expect from this painting was the absolute curveball these gouache paints have been. Right from the moment I toned the paper, I knew I was in for a struggle. Not only did I dive into a complicated sketch without a proper reference, but apparently I thought it would be a good idea to test out new paints. And let me tell you, I am not used to that color shift thing that gouache does. But I had a goal for this project. Be brave. By day two, I was feeling a lot more confident with the paint. So all that was left was a few slightly scary final touches. If you feel like doing me a favor, let me know in the comments what your favorite part of this video is. It'll help me decide what I'm gonna do in future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.